doing something wrong here, but anyways, we're live. What do you mean? Uh, something feels off. And we are back for another live episode of The Kingdom. Welcome back. It is Wednesday night, which means we are back. <laughs> and tonight is a special one. We got uh, local knowledge tonight. This is a segment, a series we've been running for the last couple of weeks and throughout the rest of 2024. We're recovering local golf courses. We're going step by step through the history, the course records, some tips, everything about it. And tonight we got Wheat City Golf Course on the docket. So we're glad you could be here for this special episode. 1.5 of our home courses, I guess you'd say. But anyways, we'll talk about it. We'll see you in 30 seconds. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the kingdom. As always, my name is Drums, and I'm joined by the brothers behind King Golf, Regan and Jorn Headley. As we always do, this time of the night, we send it up north, see what's going on with our boy, Reg. Reg, what's happening? How are you doing? How are you feeling, buddy? Good evening, gentlemen. Feeling, uh, feeling good. Uh, <laughs> was in Winnipeg last night, uh, watching the Jets and Oilers. Had a few too many beers of the game. Had to get back for work this afternoon. So it's been a pretty uh, slow evening on Wellington Crescent here. Uh, <laughs> not uh, not too much happening. Unbelievable game. Uh, Jets were down 3-1. Tied it up, went to OT. They had a power play with two minutes left. Kind of got to score that or you know you're going to lose to others in overtime. Uh, it seemed like they had a, a power play in overtime with, with McDavid and Dreisaitl out there together. Those two are nuts. Uh, first, and the sniper well, I, himself. I, yeah, and Hyman. No, he he came out second with Nuge. I think. I think that's when they scored. But we watched uh, McDavid in Vegas, and we had a little different seats there. We we're kind of right up against the back of the back of the building. You couldn't really see how good he was. But last night was like, holy shit, he's he's nuts on a different level. Good, and then it was uh, birthday weekend this weekend. So, mm -hmm. yeah, happy birthday, big guy! Thanks, buddy. What's up, buddy? Jor, what's happening out in Rossburn, buddy? Top of the evening to you, ladies and gents. Glad to be here. Happy belated, Reggie, as Ches says, right as I was about to say it. We were in Dauphin for the weekend. It was a good weekend. Got to see some old pals and uh, had a few drinks for sure. But other than that, things are good. We almost had a live audience tonight, but Arnie took off right as the countdown started, so it must have spooked him. Uh, not much going on here, though. Solo parenting, bridges in Regina, and so it's uh, a lot of work looking after young Arnie, young Arnest. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it's good. Weather's been good. It's been cold, though. Holy cow. You look outside, it's like, okay, I got to get outside. It looks beautiful. Then you step outside, and you're like, okay, never mind. We're going back in. So I don't know, uh, I don't know how many people out there are dog walkers themselves, but it's, you kind of got to go out there, whatever the weather is, just so, especially with the puppy. So they run out of a uh, bit of energy, get them through the, the rest of the day so you can do some work. So it's been a grind, but it's been a lot of fun. So anyways, uh, I, one thing I did want to mention today is like, like I do every week, I have some Spence Brothers pizza before the show <clears throat> and Shout out to Spence Bros for not increasing their prices throughout this uh, major inflationary period we've gone through. But I will say <laughs> the ba the pep and bacon that I used to get, there's a lot less bacon on there than there was before. So <laughs> we talked about the golf industry being affected by it with them taking away a few irons out of every set. Spence Bros has chosen to take out the bacon. <laughs> so there's about five specks of bacon on the pep and bacon pizza. So Anyways, I, I don't know. What do you guys think on that? Like, would, would you rather pay a couple bucks more and get an actual pizza or pay the same price and get less for it? Like, I don't know. It's kind of a. I don't know. 
paying more and more is driving me more and more i know up the wall so i'm gonna go with the lesser amount no matter yeah, what it too. is that you get yeah i feel like that's the case for most things but if it's something that you love like that like i love spence bros pizzas like i would pay an extra two bucks for that uh unfortunately there's not a world where you could like pick and choose that it's not like a regular versus the justin trudeau right. version not for 9.99 <laughs> So, <laughs> anyways, uh, that's me, Drummy. What's up in Brennan? Yeah, same as you, man. It's absolutely, it's the wind, I think, is kind of the, it was the, the wind. driving force by the cold. Um, but seeing the forecast, seeing that the fair is just about over, we got to be out of this shit, boys. We got to be yeah. clawing our way. We gotta We're close. This weekend, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Reggie, we, me and Liz were in Winnipeg this weekend as well. Um, Took some time, had a little getaway before uh, number two makes an appearance here. So when's two coming? Due date is April twenty seventh. So holy, we're, we're, on, we're, on the, we're on the watch here now. I guess we should probably pack a bag, wow. get some shit organized. But uh, you know, so it was good. We got into Winnipeg. We got to see uh, our boy Rob. We spent the night with them Friday. We went to uh, dinner with them, then to a comedy show. Uh, and me and Rob, I think. I think we got roofied at the comedy show or something because the wheels fell off on the boys and uh, the girls were none too happy about it. But uh, other than that, it's pretty pretty fantastic weekend getting into Winnipeg and spending some time just us uh, for one last time before we are bombarded by children. Yeah, you're gonna be in one, man. <laughs> It'll be good. It'll be good. Second one's always easier. I heard. Well, I'm hoping Luca can just take over. <laughs> I think you're wishing, bud. Yeah. Hey, what was the? Uh, I'm just looking through this tee off box or tee off book here. What was the golf course called before? I can't find it in here right now. Rec Center. There's no search button on this book. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's okay. Maybe anyways. the best thing of, of technology: the ability Not to search Center? easy and Zoom. Yeah, I can't find it in here though. I don't know. I thought I had it. Uh, Zoom also. Have you ever? I think it was Dad one time. He was reading the newspaper, or a, or something on paper, and he tried to go like that. Magnifying. Zoom. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. Anyways, should give a shout out here. We're once again streaming on Zap Stream, and I see there's a chat in there from Demon. Watching random live streams on Noster is a lifestyle. So. <laughs> I guess. All right, welcome, brother. That's your uh, Wednesday night. I'm here for it. Glad to have you, my friend. Hopefully you're a golfer, or else you probably won't get a whole lot out of this show. But anyways, uh, I'll keep looking for this. Tonight we got a special show, like I mentioned right off the hop. We got Wheat City Golf Course. We're doing our local knowledge segment, and we got some really good information tonight. So before we get to that, though, we'll get to uh, a few different things. We got a cheers first, then we got the around the greens. And it, sh it does feel like we're pretty close to golfing here soon. We got some weather coming. It's been a long winter, and it's it's nice that a golf podcast can finally feel a little bit of golf. So with that, what's the cheers tonight? Uh, we got two of them, actually. Who wants to do the first one? Uh, yeah, I got it here. Uh, so the first one's going to be to our boy, Patty Law. Uh, Patty Law was named to the PGA of Manitoba Board of Directors uh, over the weekend, uh, and he signed on as their social media and website chair. So huge congrats, massive shout out, and a cheers to our boy, Patty Law. Well said, Drummy. Good job, Patty. Pick the right Good guy. Patty. Definitely the right guy for that role. Good to see that. Oh, here we go. Brandon Community Rec and Sports Center. That's what it's called. Six page sixty six. <laughs> Do you think that he got it uh, because he won the social media award on the Dolmies? <laughs> he probably put that on his resume. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Back to back sure. champion of the Dolmies. <laughs> For sure, we should ask him about that. Actually, well, maybe we'll get him on the show sometime here soon mm -hmm. and see what he uh, has to say about it all. That'd be cool, actually been a while it has been a while so golf highways in the chat we got some good info from him 
uh, coming up, Weed City. But uh, the second cheers I would like to give to Clara Peak. Somewhere I had this uh, cheers up here. I'll get some info on her. But she won a, a golf tournament over the weekend. It was an 18-hole event. They had to cancel it due to the weather. But she ended up in a tie for first. So uh, Clara or Clara, what do you think it would be? Reggie, you're on mute. You're on mute. Cla- Clara? I would say Clara. Yeah. Clara? Okay, so Clara is a Binsgarth native, so pretty close to uh, the stomping grounds out here. She shot a plus 171 to finish tie for first at the Hard Scrabble Invitational in Fort Smith, Arkansas. She had four birdies, nine pars, and five bogeys for the round. And she is playing currently at the Redlands Community College. Did anybody get a eye on where that is? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. There you go. Nice. So that's pretty cool. That's sick. It's, uh, we've had a lot of great golfers come out of Manitoba, and it's nice to see that uh, there's some women as well. There's some pretty memorable women who have come out of Manitoba. So it's good to see Clara uh, winning some golf tournaments. I think this is her first year there, if I'm not mistaken. Nice. So cheers to Clara. Start. Absolutely. If it's her first year there in the States, she probably can't partake in uh cheers with us, but maybe in her, maybe in her dorm. So that's the cheers for tonight. Uh, good work, fellas. Short and sweet. Let's move on to, uh, do we got any housekeeping, any check-ins on AC? What's going on there? AC is in India this week, uh, playing the hero Indian open. Uh, he tees off. Uh, I guess it's in a few hours now, but at 2.30 a.m. our time um, for the first round and then 9.40 p.m. tomorrow. So if you've got the Golf Channel, usually it's those later ones in the evening where they actually have some uh, DP events on. Uh, I caught a bit of him, must have been the first round last week, second round. I can't remember now, but uh, I think I watched him on two holes. (laughs) <laughs> at one point in the really? entire tournament he did make a, an appearance so nice good to see you. more than most canadians on most golf channels yeah so that's a bonus tournament started already anyway it just started i think yeah right yeah, on well hopefully long, uh hopefully you can have a good weekend and start getting some momentum back it seems like he's had a couple yeah. weekends off with uh some lackluster uh turnouts but that's golf, baby. Well, yeah. Some he's kind of been goes. finishing okay. Yeah. He's just been... nothing special. I yeah. mean, it's just 30, 35th place. Uh, I think the last I saw he was his last, last post was uh, he's taking a few weeks off after this one. He's coming back home. So, uh, mm-hmm. good, little recharge. Have good stuff. Let's get to uh, around the greens. You got some tonight, Drummy? <laughs> Just got a couple ones for us before we can get to the main event. Um, Did you guys see this one today? Chris DeMarco has a beautiful quote here. And he says, we're kind of hoping that Liv buys the Champions Tour. Let's play for a little real money out here. I mean, this is kind of of a joke. When When we're getting two million. There were seven guys last week from the TPC Sawgrass. Uh, that made that made the same money as our purse. So Chris is coming straight out and advocating for uh, a little bit of cash influx. Apparently, this is what you have to do with the PGAs: uh, is poke them and poke them, and then publicly poke them until you get some money. Um, but Liv might be the some, answer for the champions too. You probably have to get some people watching it first before you start increasing purses. Probably a good uh, good starting point. <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking the same yeah, yeah nobody it's... watches our product but let's uh increase the purses because because the pg is yeah i mean that doesn't make a whole lot of sense i i, I don't know that kind of stuff pisses me off it's like it, if you were worth watching people would watch you and if people are watching you then you'd get money like that's the cycle of things here so i mean you've made a career off of playing golf for a living and uh you're still doing it today in your retirement age almost so just be happy that you're doing that instead of uh picking up garbage or something like that just just zip it chris so i don't know like i didn't get 
that far into this one. I just saw it. it was wild. So came on here, but like, was he tongue in cheek in this one? I don't really, I didn't get too much into the context of it. Either way, I think this is going to go uh, under the rug. Not, not many people are going to actually take this one seriously. Yeah, agreed. Uh, and then, uh, did you guys see this one? JT was on uh, the late night. I don't even know what they call these shows anymore. Late night show to late night show. Um, but he's doing the press run for uh, this season of First Swing. And uh, he had a great Michael Jordan story. Uh, so MJ was in Kentucky attending the Kentucky Derby. Uh, wanted to get some a round in uh, and somebody suggested the course where um, Justin's dad works at. Uh, so Mike and the boys went out to the course uh, and Mike Thomas joined uh, Mike Jordan to play with them. And uh, Justin was on the bag. So he got to do that for three straight years. Uh, MJ would come to town for the Kentucky Derby. They'd go play with his dad and Justin would haul the bags around and then, so the last year, I think he was 15 at the time. Uh, MJ told Justin to go grab his clubs and come play the back nine. So it was Justin and Jordan versus Justin's dad. And of course, Mike decides to put as much money as he possibly can on, on the game. So there's a, a bit of scratch on the table. And JT goes, what did he do? Uh, four for nine, goes four, four birdies on the back nine. Uh, and they absolutely smoke his dad. He takes the winnings and buys his first car, courtesy of Michael Jordan, basically. Wow. Oh, that's a pretty cool story. No, that is sweet. So what were the teams there? So it was just Michael Jordan and JT versus JT's dad. dad, Mike. Yeah. So essentially his dad bought him the car then. Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I saw JT chugging a beer last night at the game. It didn't... Uh... Didn't turn out had a good well start. Fun. Didn't turn out great, but I don't what know. Game? You probably have quite a bit of adrenaline Ranger. flowing. He was at the Rangers game. Yeah. He had more of a shower than a chug. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even uh, I, saw, I seen online, Michelle Wee was chirping him, so he was going back at her. He was getting it online. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Wee. Ah, good to see. Good, good to see you. Me. Okay, well, you know what? We've managed to keep... Uh, is that all you got, Drummy? That's all I got. Keep her tight. Right on. So we managed to keep it tight. We got lots of time for Wheat City because we got lots of info here on Wheat City. And I uh, I think this is going to be a good one for a lot of people. And the reason I say that is because every time you play a new course... I mean, for me, for me myself, I play Wheat City every week. And so you just kind of get into the routine of playing the same club, same shots, all that kind of stuff. And it, it's nice to just get a refreshing lens and a different perspective on occasion so i think that there are going to be a few tips here that we talk about that people might be able to put into use and i think it's just worth a shot in trying them so we'll talk about the history first we'll talk about the uh course record all that kind of stuff and then we'll get to some tips from wheat city from instagram and from ourselves and if you have any tips or any comments throughout the show make sure you toss it in there into the chat and we'll uh, we'll talk about it. So, Drummy, kick us off with some uh, the intro here on Wheat City. Alrighty, the Wheat City Golf Course is a par seventy one six thousand four hundred twenty six yard golf course located on the west end of Brandon, Manitoba, tucked along the Assiniboine River. Wheat City is a picturesque eighteen hole course that has varying natural habitat and features. The course includes mature trees, water hazards, rolling fairways, and undulating greens. Playing over 6,400 yards from the, black, the back tees, the par 71 layout offers plenty of challenges for the best of players without discouraging those of lesser skill levels. So that is from the website. That's, from the, that's the 2024 version of it. I'm going to read the 1991 version of it. When it was called Brandon Community Recreation and Sports Center. <laughs> so this is uh, this says it was owned and operated by the city of Brandon since 1975, 1975 which it still is, right? Yes. Still owned by the city. Uh, it's a year-round facility, or it was, with an 18-hole championship golf course, including golf, tennis, licensed restaurants, sh six sheets of curling ice that are no longer there, 
and some groomed ski trails. The public course is home to the Western Open, which was revived back in 2023, and the Heart Fund Golf tournaments, as well as many others. Built into the meanders of the Assiniboine River on hilly terrain, water comes into play on 10 out of 18 holes. The natural setting with the well-wooded, mature trees and small greens makes the course one of the most challenging in the area. Upgrading is done yearly with such additions. Well, there's been a lot since then. But one of the <laughs> one of the new amenities implemented uh, was a twilight rate for power carts. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is it. And uh, it says it's the most challenging game. hole, <laughs> most challenging holes, yeah. number four, according to this. And the least challenging hole is number 15, which I wouldn't say that I agree with either of those two. But uh, that's what this book says. And this is the interesting part of this whole thing. Back at the time, you could have got in a round in at Wheat City for guess for an adult. 18? 1991. I'm going to say $30, $38. 38 Reggie? 24 How about this? $11. What the fuck? $11. Bucks. Eight fifty for juniors, nine fifty for seniors, and six seventy five for the twilight fee. And only $3.50 if you had a school instruction. What? That's crazy. How much was the Twilight Golf fee? Or the card fee? I don't know. It doesn't say. <laughs> uh, but at the time, the manager, the facility manager was Tom Keep at the time of this book. So pretty interesting stuff. Uh, that's from 1991. Let's uh, get to a little bit of history here. So Wheat City Golf Course, um, or known as the Rec Center to some, known as Sweet City by others and known as Sweet Titties by some as well. Here in operation, and the clubhouse was built in 1963. It was originally a private club called the Brandon Golf Club, and you can still see where the pool used to be between the tennis courts and the Eagle's Nest patio. So it used to be a private course. Pretty cool. Uh, here's some people of note that have played the Wheat City Golf Course. I'm going to start this, and then Reggie's going to carry it on with a couple very notable golfers here. But the first one is Dan Halderson, and they actually named the street where they did the additions there, uh, the new street that crosses the tra uh, train tracks. I think it's called Dan Halderson Drive. Uh, but he was a PGA Tour winner. He had two top tens in the Players' Championship. He was the assistant pro for a period of time at Wheat City. And stories of him being able to drive the second green when there was a lot more trees and a lot less technology. Bill Thompson, the former pro before Rich Bull, was also known to have drove the green back in the day. That's pretty cool. So there's more trees, I'm guessing, closer to the green. There was more trees there. I would that's think. kind of the only place they'd come into play, and that's where it's only yeah. only part that's open there. And less technology. Pretty cool. I was going to say, I've also seen a young Moose Kaminsky drive that green on a Friday Night Golf. But uh, he had less trees and more technology. So we'll give it uh, to Dan Halderson for that one. And Rich Bull, Brandon golf legend who still plays Wheat City today, was the pro from 1969 to 1982. Grady and Dave have both worked with him at one point or another. Reggie, tell us about this one. Hey, um, real quick, is number two. Were we golfing together? I feel like it was us three, maybe, and Dal. And I hit that tree like 70 yards from the green, like right at the top of the tree, and it kicked it onto the fringe. I don't remember that. Like it shot at head somehow. It was the craziest bounce I've ever got in a golf course, I think. <laughs> like I know I what trees on the trees that. on. I hit into the trees on the left, and it, instead of it like bouncing into the on fairway, the like it, it like shot it straight ahead and oh. we were looking at everywhere for my ball and then we went up to the green and it was on the fringe <laughs> it was insane that's wild might have hit the cart path anyways another few notables that played uh mo norman did two exhibitions at wheat city uh rich rich passed along a crazy story 
he saw himself remote couldn't find a good piece of turf to hit off of so continued walking down the first hole until he eventually ended up standing somewhere near the ninth green he started hitting his nine iron and clipped an overhanging hydro line someone from the gallery yelled out ask him to do it again and he proceeded to hit it three more times in a row <laughs> my god <laughs> just wild stuff <laughs> So he went from the first hole to the ninth green, which is pretty much the whole first hole, looking for a good piece of turf to hit it off of. It's going to be the most Nor Mo Norman thing of all time. Yes, 100%. Uh, Joe Cook, Joe Cook, Joe Cook, Joe Kirkwood Sr., a world famous trick shot golfer who did an exhibition in the 60s and had some tour stops. Rich commented, I remember him being, thir I remember being 13 and totally mesmerized by it. He hit it from about 250 yards into the 18th green. Golf Brandon took over management in 2020 on a five-year lease, which has recently been extended into a 20-year lease. And the uh, Wheat City Golf Course hosted the Canadian Junior Championship in 1966. Ray Bull was the tournament chair. I did. I did not know that Golf Brandon took over uh, a twenty-year lease. I just thought it was five as well. So they got that place till twenty forty. That's pretty cool. I think yeah. they well, just got extended this year. Okay. Like going into twenty-four, they're twenty years from now on, I believe. Which is ideal. Yeah, that just makes so much sense to me. It's like yeah. if you if you got guys in there for five-year terms, like they're not going to do anything with a long-term horizon on. You're it, never right? gonna. Yeah, you, you're never gonna get to a point where you realize what you started five years exactly. ago to, to see if it worked. That's, that's the biggest problem I have with like politicians. They stay in there for four years. Like what are you, what are you supposed to do in four years? Everybody's just mm -hmm. so short sighted with everything. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. 20 year lease. That's going to be a huge uh, net positive for Wheat city golf course for sure. Yeah. I mean, in the last five years, it's been like a night and day difference. So that's exciting for the next 20 years. We'll okay, so next up, drawers out, but we'll continue. Uh, next up, we've got the course record. Now, the official, and that means tournament play, uh, official course record is 65. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, a name associated with the 65. Uh, and then we got a few. What do we got? One, two. We got three that are tied for the unofficial course record. Uh, Dwight Kearns has a 63, birdieing the last six holes to shoot it. Uh, oh, wow. The fellow we just spoke about, Dan Halderson, also shot a 63. And most recently, uh, was it last year or the year before? I can't even remember now. Um, but I think it was last year. Yeah, Brandon's own Evan. I have a tough time with this gentleman's name. Do either of you have any input of how to say Evan's I last name? I think it's Nautical. Nautical? Nautical. Evan shot an... Evan also shot a 63 uh, last year. Two, no, that was two years uh, ago. That was two years ago. Two years ago? All right. Yeah. To tie the, the other two at 63. And I only remember that because we played a skins game with him. It was like the, the day after or the day before. And anyways, he oh, took yeah. all of I our money. Uh, <laughs> Roscoe was actually in that round with us. He took all of our money and then he shot 63. It was either the day before or the day after, but uh, pretty cool nonetheless. So shout out to Evan for that. Pretty good golf, but shout out to Dwight Kearns, birding the last six holes. Have a day. So 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, and 13. Wow. Two birdies on those two par threes to kick that off. That's Holy that's got to be the best stretch of golf in Wheat City history. Especially 13. Wow, Dwight. Let's get Dwight on the show. Those on those holes is good. Yes. Roscoe is in the chat. Roscoe uh, Shanks is looking good. I've seen some pics on Instagram lately. Uh, what a time to be opening up. Everybody's getting horny into golf, and it looks like Shanks is going to be opening the door soon. We don't have a date yet, but uh, anyways, good to see they're very close there. Looks beautiful in there. Yeah, it's nuts. Oh, look at that in the chat. Oh, might be next Friday. We'll keep our fingers, our toes, and our nards. Our nards Rocks. crossed. <laughs> okay, so part of the local knowledge we do, we should give a shout out to uh, Caspi. 
Jordan Kaspik, he provided us with a bunch of good info today. I think with the help of Dave and by the looks of it, Rich Bull as well. So big shout out to them for giving some info here. It sure helps the show out quite a bit and to help promote the golf course. Uh, so the feature holes, this was kind of a hot debate today on Instagram. Uh, we had a little bit of a chat before posting it to Instagram and we couldn't really come up with a feature hole ourselves. So we took to the polls and by the looks of it on Instagram, the overwhelming winner feature hole at Wheat City is number one. Good hole, choice, yes. Hole three is second with 25% of votes. Hole and three? Yeah, that's the one, the part three along the river. It's a beautiful oh, hole. Oh, yeah. That's a nice hole. Uh, the only issue with number three is the tee box. I've had some trouble with that the last couple of years, or as long as I can remember anyways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... I don't know. Any uh there's a few other mentioned as well. I like number eight as a feature hole as well. Me too. Yeah. Just because that tree kind of uh, I don't know, it's just a nice hole. Elevated tee box, scorable, and uh just a fun mm -hmm. hole. It's, it can it can turn around seven and eight can turn around a bad back nut or bad front nine pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Um I like number nine too, actually. I do too. Nine gets me. That's a good way to kill your nine as well. If you run mm -hmm. into some problems on uh... <laughs> Roscoe is probably not wrong here. Honestly, what, he eight? says it, it'd be the feature hole if it was a par four on number eight on hole eight. Valid. Pretty valid. I mean, you hit a good drive. You're hitting about eight iron into the green. I think that's pretty yeah. short for uh par five. Depending on wind, but yeah. For the but most it, part. it can also eat you up too. Like I've I've made quite a few doubles there. I've made a lot of birdies, but I've also made a lot of doubles. So really, I it's I, and most of the holes on this course are dependent on where you put your drive. If you put it in a decent spot and play, then you've got a decent yeah. shot at scoring, right? Yeah, seven is also a beautiful hole, and I think that they're doing a pretty good job of cleaning everything up around there. So I, I don't know. It's it's nice to have some. Uh, we got options some what would you call it some scorable holes par five should be scorable but so eight might turn into a bit of a, a harder par four honestly so i don't know uh we'll keep it a par five anyways let's uh where are we at in the show here we'll keep going let's uh let's do the tips reggie you're on mute sorry i got a cat that's going nuts back here so it's all right. I'll need that. Um, tips from uh, Caspi and Dave, as uh, Drew mentioned, uh, there's a lot of risk reward decisions off the tee, and often hitting less than driver can make your round a lot more stress free, especially on the front nine. Uh, 13, as we just discussed, uh, might be the toughest part on the course, and due to the slope of the green, anything long and left is trouble. Safe miss for the up and down short, right? Uh, missing short and approach shots typically leaves you in better spots to chip uphill. And make your up and downs, but also plenty of holes where being long or green is trouble. <laughs> Pretty much every hole except for four and five, 10, 12, <laughs> 14, 16, and 18. So yeah, that's kind of the theme. I never really realized that before, but that's yeah, definitely the truth. True. So if you're playing Wheat City for the first time, usually our advice is to take an extra club. But I would say at Wheat City, just hit the club you think that you'd usually hit there, and you'd probably be okay. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of the overview from Caspi and Dave and anybody else at Wheat City. I'm sure Grady might have had some input in there as well. <laughs> but uh, Drummy, we're kind of what we're going to do here is we're going to go through a few holes. We're not going to get through every hole here just for time purposes. Yep. But uh, we'll kind of try, try to touch on as much as we can. we got some great tips here. And then we'll just kind of talk things through. So kick it, kick us off, Drummy, on hole one. All right, on hole one, we got a couple of different approaches here. Uh, and we'll hit them with both. Uh, the first one comes from our boy, Dustin Dick. And this is for if you're hitting the big stick. So if you are hitting the big stick, hitting the driver, uh, aim for the left fringe and let it rip. If it does curve, uh, sorry, it cur if it curves 30 yards either way, you're still going to be fine. Uh, which is true if you're Great advice. aimed if you're aimed right there. Yeah. Uh, you've got 30 on the left, 30 on the right. On the left, 
Uh, you're going to deal with a bit more of the elements. You're going to be closer to the ninth green uh, in there. There's that ditch in play as well. Still playable from over there, um, where if you go right, you're going to be kind of on the, the slope of the, what do we call that, the dike, um, yep. kind of worst case Ontario. So uh, great tip there. And then Evan Nautical, uh, aim at the tree, stay short of the bunker, and start your day with two full swings. Great advice, both. So hole number one, you kind of have an option there. This is the feature hole on the golf course. It's an elevated tee box. You got the Assiniboine River to your right, bush on the left. It's quite a it's quite a large landing zone, I'd say. Uh, and it, it does usually require some sort of decision there. So I, I wanted to include both, both great tips from Dustin and Evan. I would say from our men's night group, just as a sample size, it's about 50-50. Probably more guys go for the green than not, honestly. Um, I'm one of the guys. Yeah. yeah, I'm one of the guys who usually first swing of the day, I like to just hit a nice seven or six iron out there. And I'm I'm kind of with Evan there. Aim at the tree and start your day with two full swings. And you kind of take a lot of trouble out of the way. But I also love Dusty's um aiming at the left fringe. I've never thought of that before. I usually kind of just aim somewhere behind the green and hope for the best. But I, I think if I'm going to start doing that, I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb. And just knowing that you have about 30 yards either way will make you feel a little bit more comfortable, I think, on that first tee shot. So hole number two, that is the dog leg right, which we kind of touched on already. That's probably one of the tougher holes on the course. So anything good with a, anything with a par, I think, would be good on hole two. Uh, but we're going to skip to number three. So this was, uh, some of these tips are actually from the Wheat City Instagram page. So a couple of years ago, they did uh, kind of a feature on every hole as well. And there's actually quite a bit of good tips on there. So this one happened to be from us. This was King Golf's tip for hole number three. And this is, a, this is the strategy here. So hole three is a shorter par three. It's about 160 yards. Can be a very tough hole though, depending on where the wind's coming from and depending on how you slice or or draw the ball but uh kind of the rule of thumb here is that anything right of the bunker is perfectly fine you're not going to be any sort of trouble unless you're in the river obviously but anything right and between the river is perfectly fine if there's a left if there's a left pin and you miss the green taking aim at the at the pin you're gonna have a very hard time making a par imagine the pin being on the right side of the green every time you play the hole that's kind of what i do so uh, I'm sure people in the chat here can attest to that if you're on the left side and it's uh, even with the right pin, it's, it's a very hard time getting up and down from the left side of that hole. So try to keep it right if you can. It's, it's definitely gotten easier in the last few years when they've softened Cleared the greens up a little brush. bit. Softened yep. the greens to it like six, seven years ago. Like if you're left there, like you were absolutely dead. Gone. On the what side? Like if you're on the left side and you could never stop it, right? Right. No, like it was gone the over so nine. Hard, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this next one, we're going to get to hole four. And this was actually, uh, Dustin sent this in for the King Golf uh, Instagram. But I'm actually going to read his from the Wheat City one because it's a little bit more in depth. And I think that there's some really good information on here for people. So this is from Dustin Dick. Uh, this is what he says. Hole four, I find, is all about either keeping your good start intact or keeping a bad start from getting out of hand to allow yourself to get uh, back on track later on within the front nine. I discovered the best way to play the hole, and for most people I've golfed with this, to try to hit your tee shot with the goal of leaving yourself between 120 and 140 yards. So when you're playing this hole, this is my thoughts on this, but do the math on that. Look at how far the hole is, work backwards from there. And if you want to be 120 out, figure out what club is going to get you there. Because it's the widest part of the fairway and it gives a player the most visual access to all parts of the green and gives players a better opportunity to stop the ball closer to a front pin. Um, par is a very good score here and a birdie is a bonus. You don't want to let this hole beat you when it so easily can right off the hop with a poor tee shot often caused by poor club choice off the tee. So 
I, I like that. I mean, that kind of sets up perfectly for me in terms of hitting my driver. But also at the, t at the same time, it just gets so narrow up by the green and it, it kind of slants towards the trees. So even if you hit it perfectly straight off the tee box, you're going to be in the trees. So unless you're somebody who knows how to cut it one way or the other, I, I love Dusty's comment there. Just, just hit like a four iron out there and get it to 140 yards, hit a nine iron in, and you're probably going to make a par there instead of uh, automatic double right off the tee box. Mm -hmm. and that's the case most of the time, I think. I haven't had too many safe tee shots there. Yeah, yeah, it's not visually appealing for most golfers there. So that's uh, uh, that's all four. We're going to skip a few. Hole five and six. What are they? Par four. Six is a par, par three. three. Pretty straightforward. And then seven is uh, a beauty. But I can't give any tips on seven because I usually end up with a double there somehow. So take us to hole eight, Reggie. Yeah. Hole eight. Uh, tip sent in by uh, Nolan Ritchie. Uh, former... Tamarack runner up. I think he's currently playing uh, hockey in, in Swiss, so a little jealous of where he's at right now. <laughs> but uh, he says, aim just right of center, which is a wide landing area and the shortest path to the hole. And be sure to take an extra club on the approach to account for the elevated green. Great advice. I think the the extra club has got me plenty of times you hit a perfect drive out there and you think that it's 160 yards or 170 yards you think you get a uh, eight iron there and i mean short's not bad it's just there's two bunkers right in front of the green and those bunkers are no picnic to get up and down out of so and short's still definitely better than long yeah when you're coming onto the green yeah but it's uh it's a, it's a tough view from the fairway because it looks so wide but it has actually quite a bit of uh, depth to it as well. So just, just hit a shot. It kind, it kind of is the same thing for hole 17 at Clear Lake for me. It just looks very uh, wide, but you have to consider just in your head, visualize how big it is kind of from above. I don't know. It's hard to kind of explain that, but that's what I try to do there. Because it, it, it's hard on the eyes. It looks very wide, but it looks like you have no landing space there because it is higher up. So that's hole eight. Uh, seven and eight are definitely the ones you want to be scoring on. You kind of want to be patient, I think, through the first, uh, the front nine. Be patient. If you can get through one or two over par heading to seven, I think you're going to be in a pretty good spot. So just keep that in mind, I think, for the first six holes. It's like just, just weather the storm. Just put it in play and make a few pars, maybe a bogey, maybe a birdie, and then uh, take advantage of holes seven and eight. So we're going to uh, read a, a little blurb here from Drake, who's in the chat tonight, Golf Highway. So this is kind of his summary on the front nine. So he says, from a lefty's point of view, if you're trying to score on the front, keep your driver in the bag until hole five. Hole one is a perfect warm-up hole. Hit an iron out to the bunker. Make sure you leave it about 100 yards out. Uh, this leaves a wedge in hand and gives a great opportunity to score right off the hop without risking any danger. Great advice. From that point, all you have to do is keep your ball in the fairway and you'll have similar looks on two, four, five, and nine. Holes seven and eight are your really good chances to score, so take advantage of that. Holes three and six, knock it on or close to the green, two putt or get up and down, take your threes and run. My best front side is a minus 432. Birdie's on three, four, seven, and eight. And don't ask about the back nine. <laughs> So there you go. Good info I think I from. Remember uh, seeing that post. Pardon me. I think I remember seeing that post. I don't think the back nine is. Was very good. I was gonna say he would. Uh, he should be in. Um, Sixty three territory with the rest of the boys if he was up to that. So that I think yeah I don't know what the score was there but I think it was like 32, 52 or something stupid like that he'll maybe say in the chat but it was it was quite no. the extreme. Um. So that's the front nine. After you finish the front nine, you go to one of the harder holes, which is hole 10. But before you do that, you grab a nice, juicy jalapeno smoky from the shack, a couple beers. And Weed City was actually nominated the runner-up for best food and drink out of all the golf courses in Manitoba, runner-up to Clear Lake. I think solely because of those jalapeno smokies. Jalapeno, yeah. They're pretty tasty. Phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, they are. 
So with that, let's head to uh, hole number 11, Drummy. Hole 11 is the first par three on the back nine, 176 yards. Uh, any pin right of center here is a sucker. Don't even look at it. All the trouble is to the right, uh, is to the right of this hole, and it is such a straightforward up and down if you miss right. Most people take one club less on this tee shot. Yeah, this is uh, what what would you say this hole is, Drummy? About one seventy. It says one seventy five. I th- I, th- I always play it about one seventy. Yeah, is kind of the max. I guess I've seen it one eighty when you're right at the back back. Yeah, I think that uh, if you're gonna miss this, it it's visually very challenging because it, anything right, that's where the bunker is. And if you yeah. get into trouble, that's a very hard landing spot on the right side of that green. I think this should have said if you missed to the left instead of the right. Yeah, that got me most reading. Yeah, sorry, I messed that one up. So sorry, yes. Your your left uh your miss should be left than right. Yeah, and there's tons of room. Right, left, you've got right? bunker, yeah, tons of room. Uh you even got another T box if uh if things go completely sideways for you. Um, as opposed to water and bunker and bush. So uh, yeah. bail left if needed. Right is just asking for trouble there. Uh, so hole number 12, this is uh, just my advice here. But I want you to work backwards on this one as well. Because uh, a shot from 100 yards, the approach shot, is much cleaner than the approach shot from 50 yards out. And because it's an elevated green, it's very difficult to hit a 50-yard elevated shot for one but then you also bring in the trees on both sides and so if you're left of that tree on the left side and you're behind that with about 50 yards out that's an absolutely impossible shot to make impossible and that's pretty much where most people's drive ends up if you hit a if you hit a long ball you're going to be about 50 yards left or 50 yards short and if you're left behind that tree you're absolutely snuckered so i just usually hit a, a wood out there aim to the right even if you're a little bit further right than you want to be, that's where uh, hole seven runs. So there's Eight. tons of room out there. there. There's just no sense of flirting to the left at all. There's bush there, there's trees. And that approach shot with that tree right in front of the green uh, makes it very hard. So t- work backwards there. That's kind of my advice. Yeah. Um, that approach shot is getting harder and harder uh, the more mature those trees get. Yes. They're going to have to start doing some trimming in there. Yeah. Even to just give you some kind of shot to hit the front of the green. Yeah. I agree with that. Because it is, uh, but I mean, it punishes you kind of both ways there. If you're left or right, you have to hit it over those trees. And the fir- the closer you are to the green there, the harder that becomes to get it up and over that. So, and then if you're further back, it, you have to fly it over top of that and somehow land onto the green. So, you, yeah. you have a very small landing space if you're left or right on that hole, and you really have to pay attention to that, I think. It is a very large green, so it is a um, you have a pretty decent size once it gets up there. Yeah. Um, if that was a smaller green, that would be a extremely difficult hole. Yeah. With the little chute that you have in the center, as you're looking at it from the fairway, just deceives you so much. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the other part of that too, which we never even talked about is if you had a driver and if you're on the right, you're actually going to be in the water there. So I just, yeah, I guess see I, any, I, I just don't see any sense of people hitting drivers there unless you're hitting from the back tees and you're kind of into the wind. But if you're hitting from the white tees and you hit it about 250 yards, you could easily end up in that water or you could easily end up right behind that tree on the left. So I always just hit a five wood out there. Yeah. Definitely, um, yeah, kind of the terrain between um 12 and 8 it's so dry there that you mm. can't hit driver right like if you hit driver it's going to have yeah. so much spin you're going right in the water yeah. um where if there was grass you might be more inclined to give it a shot but mm-hmm. unfortunately just with that area um only bad spot on the course is kind of between those two holes which between them screw it um but it's not a landing pad for for drivers anymore i agree and there's a car path right there too yeah Uh, So the next one here is, as I was going through these on (laughs) Instagram, I saw a post from Weed City, and I just wanted to bring this up because 
remind people how insane things were for this was May 2021. So the post from Wheat City was a public health update. Provincial health orders requiring golfers to reside from the same household to play in a group together have been extended. So this was the craziest time in probably yeah. the world history in terms of you were only allowed to golf with people of your family. So I couldn't I couldn't golf with Reggie. I couldn't golf with drums. I couldn't golf with anybody. And if I didn't have any any family members, I had to golf by myself. Outside, in the sun, in the fresh air, that's what the rules were. So I just wanted to uh, d take a trip down memory lane just to see how insane we lived for a while. So that's uh, hole 12. Hole 13 and 14 probably are what? I'd say they're the most challenging par threes in the area, myself. Yeah. One is anyways, right? Which one? I guess they both would be, yeah. I'd say the first one's harder than the second one, right? Yeah, 13 is definitely harder because of the length. Um, but I think 14 is actually a tougher golf hole. Oh, sorry. I, uh, Which one's the shorter one with the 14. crazy slope green? 14. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. It's harder. Yeah. So 13 and 14, I'd say 13 is probably 185 to 190, slightly uphill, bunkers on both sides. It's a very tough hole. And if you're above the green there at all or on the left side, you're going to have a very hard time getting up and down. It is possible, but it's tough to do. And if you ever see a red flag on hole 13, turn around and just go home. Skip it. Yeah. That, I've only seen it a couple times. I've seen it on men's night a couple times, and I saw it in the Western Open this year. But hole 13 with a red pin, I've seen guys in scrambles make like a double bogey there because of uh, there's just no way to stop it on top of the hill there. So, yeah, it's uh, very similar to nine at Clear Lake uh, that you can get up to some insane shenanigans on that. Yeah. Well, back and forth, if you're chipping, putting, all of a sudden you're back down in the halfway <laughs> down the hole. So that's uh, that's thirteen. I, my my best advice on hole thirteen would honestly just be, if you if you're not confident with it, just keep it to the right. That's it. From from anywhere on the right or short, it's actually a decent chip to try to get up and down from there. So fourteen is a different beast. But let's skip uh, to hole fifteen, which is apparently the easiest hole in the golf course according to tee off golf. I would disagree with that, but also well, that would be for the green, right? Both right. greens. Right. What do you mean both? 15, 16, both. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so 15 was extended. They made the green about 20 yards further back, 25 yards back. Well, do and you remember what, when it was all one green? Yeah. <laughs> that it was, was like insane. that for about a year, eh? I, uh, I worked there years? at that time. I built that green uh, while we were building it. I had questions every day. Why are we doing this? Why is it this big? This is the most insane green that's ever existed. But we continued with it uh, for one year and then drastically, drastically changed it again the following year. It's a tough green. One, one thing I would say on that is that uh, if you are somebody who uses a GPS, like a watch, just double check it. Because Moose and I were using Moose's watch for a, a couple. It, it only lasted a couple of times before we figured it out but it gives you the, the gps of the old green so we Which were always funny. coming up like 20 or 30 yards short with our approach shots <laughs> his gps and my gps same company and mine gave the updated his gave the old he probably just has run really? yeah weird so reggie take us to uh 15 and 16 this is kind of a dual tip yeah 15 16 comes from uh graden kramer he says bombs away on 15, bombs away right on 15 and right on 16. Lots of room, better lies, better angles. Interesting take. This is kind of how I usually play the hole. Um, definitely on hole 15. I mean, for me personally, if you can if you can find a way to get out there, it takes all the risk from the left side out of, the, out of play. Uh, but if you can find a good spot on it'd be on hole 16, but you just go right on 15. Um, it's actually a really good angle up there from that spot. And I was going to say, going from 
the right into 15 green gives you more of a look of how, uh, makes the green bigger that way i agree yeah it does i love that angle from over there yeah and if you're in the fairway there oddly enough you're probably on going to be on a side slope for the most part and so it's kind of a tough shot with a wedge in your hand and you got a slope um, whereas if you kind of just put it out there onto 16 fairway and hit back up towards 15 green, uh, I love that shot. It's probably a pitching wedge, maybe a wedge, maybe a nine iron, depending on how far you get it there, but it is a much better angle upwards, uh, to that green. So, yeah. but on yeah, 16, I don't... what he's saying is just, he's basically just saying switch fairways. Yeah. The two mm -hmm. holes. I don't know that I necessarily agree to that with that on 16 though. Because uh, I've been in some tough... You're basically back on the fairway that was supposed to be uh, more hilly. So I, I think that if you can put a good shot and play on 16, I'd aim up the middle uh, or on the right side of the... Uh, Left hole. is dead though, right? Left is absolutely Left is dead. dead. And that, that's the, the, the problem yeah. there. Yeah, right's your bailout, really. Yeah. So uh, hole 16, which is a par 5 probably the most difficult par five on the course it's got to be right yeah seven eight 16 18 yeah 16 yeah toughest par five so i'd say this is kind of my advice here uh keep it right off the tee the best way to, to play this hole for my opinion is that hit two shots that will keep you in play and try to get past the hole uh on your approach shot into the green if the pin is on the low tier if it's on the top tier, then you can be much more aggressive on your second shot, and that's where being a little bit short is okay. But the problem I find with a lot of guys who play, who we play with is that they don't really even consider where the pin is there. So they'll hit their drive about 250, hit another 3-wood or a 5-wood, another 230, 240, and they're about 40 yards short of the green. And when you're 40 yards short of the green with a front pin on hole 16, you're dead. You're either going to leave it short and have to redo that shot or you're going to run it 40 yards past the hole. So with that, I would say just like hit a driver somewhere to the 100 yards and then you can kind of hit a good shot into there, an elevated shot, and try to stop it there. It's a very sloped green uh, kind of running away from you. Uh, but on the flip side of that, if it's on the top tier, then you can take a run at it because even if you're, you know, 10 20 30 yards short you're you're still hitting up towards the top tier there so that's kind of my advice for uh 16. um 17 18 do you guys have any thoughts on those two holes as we round things out here nothing no nothing real crazy um i don't know 18 it's just I'm hit it in the middle that's all you have to do just steer this thing in the middle um it is a rather large wide fairway it's yeah. just massively it deceiving like yeah, yeah once you get up there you see the tennis courts and the train tracks everything in that um kind of plays with the mind but other than that it's a decent scoring hole um once you get up to the green again it's a big green um there's a bit of trouble on the bunker off to the left you fall off but yeah, it's not really the most intimidating hole from a hole standpoint. I think it's just the surrounding visuals that make it a bit more intimidating. Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's kind of like walking on a tightrope. Yeah. If you're if you're doing it on the ground, it's easy to do. But if you're doing it from 30 yards up, it's all just your your headspace yeah. and how you see it. Um, one, one thing I would say on 17 is avoid left, being left at all costs. I've been in that long grass uh countless times and it's very tough to find the ball in there and very annoying it's unnecessary everything slopes down to the left i'd say kind of use that as a general rule of thumb on the entire back nine is that everything slopes to the river because it's elevated it's above the front nine everything slopes down towards the river on every hole every green and that's one thing to actually keep in mind going back to th this is kind of applicable for holes 17 and 14 the second part three is that even if it looks like it's going to break one way it doesn't mm -hmm. 14 for sure it looks like it's going to break one way because that's kind of how the green is shaped but because of the river you always it's always going to go towards the river every putt so if it looks straight it's going to break towards the river 
th- those are the two kind of greens that it's deceiving on is 14 and 17. Um, so just keep that in mind on the whole back nine. Every approach shot, every landing spot, every putt is always going to break down towards the river. So that's that. Wheat City Golf Course. Yeah, I was going to mirror what, what Drake said. I, I found the times I played 17, it seems like the, the second shot always plays a little shorter. I've been over that green pretty much every time I've played it. Mm-hmm. It's just slightly downhill, I guess, and it's it it is. hard off the front there. Yeah. Yeah, from T to actual hole on that, if you did like the elevation difference, I think it'd be really shocking, the difference from the tee box to that hole. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. But it's just so gradual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's a ditch halfway through it. Yeah. Uh, Dusty says, love being five to ten yards into the right-hand rough on hole 15. There is no real bailout on 16 off the tee. Yeah. I agree with that. If you can stay just on the right-hand side on the 15 part of the hole on the side of the trees, that is the perfect spot to be because then you don't have to contend with the trees. I've been over on the right side there, and I have to go over that big tree kind of by the red tees on hole 16, and it's not very fun. So let's uh, hour perfectly. That's perfect timing tonight, boys. Might be the first time ever. Um, let's round out here with, uh, fix your divots. I'll, uh, I'll bring it up here. Uh, do you have it in front of you, Drummy? Somewhere. Yep. Okay. So fix your divots is our favorite segment on the show. It's, uh, we talk about pet peeves, people's pet peeves on the golf course always causes up some sort of a debate or a stir. So this is, uh, it's sponsored by the Prairie Scratch Tour, and Prairie Scratch Tour is back for another year. They got some great events this year. I think there's five plus the Tour Championship, and it's where you're going to find the best golf in Manitoba. So if you are looking for some competitive golf, some stroke play golf, which is pretty hard to come by nowadays, and you want to compete, make sure to enter in a couple of events this summer. Uh, I'm considering it. I'm going to try to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And I think that everybody should be doing that in uh, in golf and other aspects of their life. So check them out, Prairie Scratch Tour on Instagram. They got some really good stuff on there. And uh, it is where the best players in Manitoba golf. So shout out to Prairie Scratch Tour. What's uh, the fix your divots tonight, Drummy? This week's comes from our boy, Josh Bevan. Uh, and it is getting pushed up on by groups behind you when your group isn't the slow ones. So you're catching a bit of shrapnel here. Uh, there's a slow group in front of you, maybe even a group or two in front of you that are causing the backlog. Uh, and obviously, the new group up behind you thinks you're the one to blame and uh, starts firing balls or whatever the case is. It's just an awkward situation because you want to be like, hey, I'm not I'm not the asshole. Like, it's them. But what do you do? Um, you just sit there awkwardly and... Try, try not to get hit by the balls behind you, I guess. Try to dodge the balls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do there? That's the question. What do you do? I, I usually stay back and tell them. Yeah. This is where a marshal who does his job is very key. Mm-hmm. We've Definitely. talked about this from episode one. Uh, marshals that don't do anything are the most useless people on earth. Um, but when they actually do something, this is what they're there for. This is exactly what they're designed for. This is what the word marshal was put in place to do. Yep. Marshal the golf course. That is exactly what that needs. Yeah, I think that people just need to uh, have a little bit of awareness out there and just kind of realize that you're not the only people on the golf course. And uh, you can't see every hole. You can't see what's happening every time. So just like, and usually if you wait a couple holes, it's pretty clear to see who's being the slow ones there. Like if, if the group in front of you is waiting on every shot, then clearly it's not them who's holding things up here, right? So just have a bit of self-awareness. Uh, take it easy for a couple holes if it pursues or persists and you can kind of see that there's nobody ahead of them. Then don't hit balls at them, but just like, you know, start putting a little bit of pressure on them. But give it a couple holes before you start acting irrationally, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dusty says etiquette in golf has seemingly been a lost art or a lost thing. Very rare to be let through anymore. Yeah. Why is that? 
more people golfing that, that don't know the rules. That have no idea. Yeah, I would say. And lack of marshals. Oh, well. Game's growing. We can't be too uh, upset about it. Yeah, but... I mean, you. this is a result of the game growing. Is this kind of our inconvenience around it? Yeah. I guess. Um, I mean, if I get hit by a ball, I'm sending it fucking back. So it's up to them how they want to proceed. If you wake up. Yeah. The comedian's part of this, too, though, is that, like, the, there's more people golfing. There's more green fears paying green fees. The courses are all in better shape because of it. So if it's waiting a little longer, it's not. I mean, it still sucks, but the courses are definitely in better shape because those green fears are out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, let's uh, let's shut her down for the night, boys. Good episode tonight. Like I said, I think that uh, something. Hopefully, you learned something. At least one takeaway. That's all you can ask for on the golf course. You're not going to change your whole game change your whole strategy. You just got to find a couple things in your round, shave a few strokes and uh, just see where that goes. Just start, just start looking at things a little bit differently and start managing your golf game and your course uh, play a little bit better. I think, and it's the easiest way to shave off a few strokes. I think instead of changing your whole game, changing your uh, equipment, just think about things a little bit differently. So had a conversation today. Maybe I'll talk about it quickly uh, right now and then we'll, maybe catch on it next show, but I uh, had a fella reach out today and he wants to set up a little bit of a thing for the summer. He's probably a mid forties golfer and he wants, his goal is to try to par the, the course, his local course. So we're going to do a bit of a, a feature on him. I think that's kind of the plan, uh, but we'll have more information on that uh, coming up. So kind of cool. It- I think his age is 40s or that's what he shoots that's what he usually shoots so he wants to take this summer and do things uh probably this kind of stuff i think that's what he's going to be working towards and we'll probably point him in the direction of a few reggie stroke savers and kind of get him thinking a little bit uh differently as he plays the course so something some fun for summer 2024 we're pretty close boys i think next week Mm -hmm. is the masters preview if i'm not mistaken Yep. Yeah, I guess so. Holy shit. Hallelujah. There. So we got Easter yeah, weekend there. coming up, and then we got the Masters weekend coming up. And then oh, we yeah. should be golfing soon. We oh, made yeah. it, boys. We made it. Okay. We did it. Well, big <laughs> shout out to uh, Caspi. What was that, Drummy? Just giggling. You're good. Oh. Uh, Big shout out to Caspi, big shout out to Dave and Rich Bull for uh, giving some advice tonight for us and everybody who sent in some tips. I don't know what the next course is going to be yet, but it'll be in uh, two or three weeks from today. And hopefully it'll be a good one because everybody will be raring to golf. It's about time. Mm -hmm. And let's let's start a little bit of uh, what would you call it? We'll start a petition to get Wheat City oh. to get their green fees back to eleven dollars. <laughs> That's so crazy, man! Like, well within our lifetime, it was eleven dollars to play eighteen holes of golf. Yeah, but inflation's two percent. Word. Okay, that's it. We're out. Love you, boys. Later. Peace. See you, boys. Love you, fellas. <laughs>